Okay, so welcome to this next video in this playlist on antibiotics and antibiotic resistance. In this video, what we're going to talk about is the chemostat, which is a way of culturing bacteria. Okay, so this is the motivation. Let's say we want to keep some bacteria as pets, if you like, or if we want to use them to make some product, for instance, uh, where the way insulin is now made is we have transferred the gene for human insulin into the bacterial genome, and uh, these bacteria then make insulin, and therefore we want to keep those recombinant uh, bacteria, and we want them to make the insulin, and we want to collect that insulin. So the motivation for chemostat really is how do you keep bacteria happy and alive and producing whatever you want them to produce? Well, uh, there are two ways you can either culture bacteria. You can do what's known as a batch culture. Now this is not a way that um, is long term. This is something which you can use to get some bacteria and get them to grow um, for at least a little while, but it will eventually fail, basically. So it's a batch process. You make a batch of bacteria which you can then use, but it's not a process where you can actually keep them living there happily for um, indefinitely, basically. So what you do is you put them on an agar plate with all the nutrients in it. So you make an agar gel, uh, which then has uh, the nutrients that the bacteria need to survive uh, on there, uh, in that gel, basically. And then what you do is you put your, bacterial, um, your bacteria that you want to grow onto this plate. So the bacteria go onto this plate. And basically, once they've got all the nutrients they need to survive, which is in the agar plate, if you've made the agar plate properly, uh, then they will have all the nutrients they need to survive. They will uh, live there quite happily. They will grow. They will reproduce. The colony will grow, basically. You'll end up with lots of these bacteria. And that's a way of producing, basically, a whole bunch of bacteria on an agar plate. The problem is, are they going to be able to continue living on that agar plate? Well, eventually, the population is going to get so big that it covers the entire plate, and they will eventually use up all the nutrients in the agar, and then it will turn nasty, basically. They'll start dying. So this only works temporarily. You can't grow them on an agar plate uh, indefinitely. It's a batch culture process. It's a process where if you want to make a, you know, if you want to produce a bunch of bacteria for a certain time point, and um, that, that's a way that you can do it. You can put them on this agar plate, they'll grow, and then if you want to use them for an experiment, you can then use them. But you can't just keep this agar plate in a cupboard and go back to it every time you need some bacteria because they're going to die once the nutrients run out. Okay, now chemostat is what's more is what's known as a continuous culture. It's a way basically of growing bacteria continuously, and it's the most simple principle in the world. If <coughs> excuse me, the problem with the batch culture, what happened was that the nutrients ran out and then the bacteria started to die. So all you need basically is a way of replacing the nutrients and removing the waste products as well because bacteria produce a uh, lot of toxic waste products which are toxic to themselves. So that's the two problems that happen on a batch culture plate. One, the nutrients runs out, and two, the toxic waste products build up. Uh, so what you need to do is you need to produce a vessel like so, which contains a medium which is full of the nutrients that the bacteria need in order to grow. Okay, so you put the bacteria in this medium, and then what you need to have is you need to have uh, an input tube here. So this is an input tube where you can uh, inject in fresh medium uh, with fresh nutrients in. So you put in a fresh medium with the nutrients in so that the nutrients doesn't run out. And you also need an output tube where you can remove uh, the stale medium, if you like. Uh, I.e. you can remove all the waste products that these bacteria are producing. So this is going to remove the waste from the bacteria and uh, the uh, input tube is going to put in new medium with fresh nutrients in. So this is going to bring in fresh nutrients, basically. Right. 
Okay, so that's the basic principle of chemostat, that you have two tubes, one which is going to bring in fresh medium and one which is going to take it out. Now, uh, there's also another requirement. These bacteria also need to have fresh air, so you'll have another tube which will bring in fresh oxygen and you'll bubble this through uh, the medium of bacteria, basically. So here is your tube which will bring in fresh air. So uh, you also need to make sure that this is very sterile as well. So you don't want any bacteria to be brought in on the air because if you bring in some bacteria, other bacterial species, then it will come into these, this chemostat vessel. And this, by the way, is what chemostat is. This is a chemostat vessel. It's basically a way of... It's a, it's a container for um, keeping bacteria in where you can keep them in that container uh, indefinitely, basically. So there's not a time point after which they'll start to die. You can keep them in there indefinitely. Let me just move that out. Okay, right, so this is going to bring in sterile air. So basically the bacteria are, um, are they respire, basically. So they need oxygen in order to respire their aerobic, well, most of the, some of the bacteria are aerobic. If they're anaerobic, then you obviously wouldn't be bringing in fresh air. But aerobic bacteria, you definitely do need a, a tube bringing in fresh air for, to provide them with oxygen. Okay, now, um, I've drawn this uh, in a way that um, is um, probably bad, because I've drawn this output tube very large, and these bacteria will be able to slide through that. You won't have that. You don't want that. You don't want your bacteria to be f falling out of this output tube. So you'll make, uh, you know, you'll put a little filter here so that not uh, so that the um, waste materials can leave the, through the output tube, but the bacteria themselves aren't going to fall out of the um, chemostat vessel, basically. Okay, right. Um, so. Chemostat basically is an example of a continuous culture for bacteria. So you would call this a continuous culture for bacteria because you can keep them in there continuously, basically. It's not a, it's not a case of you can make your culture and then you have to use it. You can leave this in a cupboard going on and on and on. These bacteria will continue to live in here. And this is very important for people making insulin using recombinant bacteria because uh, what they will do is they will uh, have their recombinant bacteria with the insulin gene living in a chemostat vessel like this and they'll be injecting in fresh nutrients all the time and they'll be removing the waste nutrients and basically with the waste nutrients what will be coming out will be the product that you wanted the bacteria to make so the bacteria will be making the insulin and then it will be coming out through this output tube along with the waste and then all you need to do basically is separate uh, the product that you've got the bacteria to make the insulin from uh, the other toxic products that the bacteria are making and then you've got your um, product basically so chemostat is a way of um, of uh, keeping bacteria so that you can use them to produce a certain gene products such as insulin. In addition, uh, it's a way of keeping bacteria long term if you want to do scientific research on them. Uh, and we're going to see an example of how we can uh, use a modified form of chemostat to investigate antibiotic resistance.